good day to all our viewers. My name is Dr. Nisi. This is Ashes to Beauty, A to B. We are still talking statelessness. Hashtag, I too belong. Which country do you belong to? Which country were you born? We have heard. And these are the answers that we are sorting to seek answers for. These are the questions that we are sorting to seek answers for. Do not move that dial. Sit and listen very carefully. We've got an expert here, our community advisory. Any questions you have, any concern regarding the statelessness, we have solution for them. Hi lady, please introduce yourself to our viewers and tell them who you are and where do you come from. Hi, my name is Martha Langa. I'm the program director of the office, community advice officers based in Bramfisha, Dobson Law. Mm -hmm. So we have a specialist here with us. Should you have any questions, please feel free to visit the office. Mother, tell us, what is a statelessness? If somebody is saying statelessness, what is that? Um, a statelessness person is the person who is not recognized by any of the states that we have around the world. Like for an example, if you are in South Africa and you don't have any birth certificate records or ID documents, do you be a South African citizen or not? If you are in South Africa yeah. and you are not registered or recorded in any state, so yeah. you are statelessness. Like for example, in South Africa, we have nationality. If mm. uh, you are not registered in our nationality in South Africa, yeah. then you are not recognized by our state. Okay. Mm. Only by the South African country or oh, all the other countries? Globally. You are an advisor. What do you advise on? Um, as a community advice officer, on day to day, the cases that we we encounter specifically with the uh, victims who are statelessness, for example, our main focus would be GBV, uh, a person who's been violated as per their gender. They are more vulnerable when they are not registered in any state because it's easy for them to be trafficked. And uh, it's not easy for them to be, uh, to if they are trafficked, yeah. it's not easy for them to recover them because they are not registered in any state. They don't have records. They don't have anything. And the other challenges, specifically with the GPV victim, yeah. if they are statelessness, they can't access shelter because first requirement there, you must be, you must produce your document, whether yeah. it's passport, mm. refugee status, or your ID document. If you don't have that, no shelter will accept you. You just and touch on, on something important, Mother. You know, like now I'm thinking about it, that we've been talking gender-based violence. Now I'm, I'm realizing only now to say, if now you're stateless and you are a victim of gender-based violence, now it's a double attempt. How do you seem to be sorting out such issues? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big challenge, as mm. I've said, that uh, number one, shelter for your safety, it's not easy to be accessible to you mm. because you are not rec recorded or registered anyway. The police won't chase you away, they'll look for your date of birth and everything, but the challenge would be your life is in danger, you need shelter. How are you going to access that mm. without any records? So okay. it's going to be difficult for you to, to get those access. Your protection order, you can easily get it. Mm. Your case uh, docket is going to be opened but further access to your safety, it's not going to be easy for you. Remember, in this place of safety, again, you have grants, aid that you receive. Without any ID document, it's not going to be easy for you to access those aid. We are talking statelessness now, but it's linking back to gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. What if both the victim and the perpetrator do not belong to South Africa, or they are not South African citizens? How do you deal with such? It's another challenge because remember, for you to be registered, if you're an adult committing any gender-based violence, let's talk perpetrator, uh, your fingerprint is not recorded anyway. The only thing that the police officers or the law enforcement will do, they'll take fingerprint or they'll take DNA. It will be put in the record of, of, of being analyzed being analyzed but they won't identify you as this specific person who is recorded in any system of the state oh my goodness like now i'm thinking even more deeper to 
say not only are the victims of gender based violence, what about the children? What has happened when you find the whole family actually they are staying yes? Uh, once the parent, the mother, it stayed yes, it will go to your, their kids, All right. it will go to your, their grandkids, it will go to your great great grandkids. Let's take a uh, generation to generation from the mother who was not registered, who was stateless. So each and every generation that comes after her, they, they are all going to be stateless. Because they don't have a referral. They don't have his, because the referral point will be the parent mm. who is stateless. Mm. So it's wise that people are register in any nationality of their state so that they are recorded in, in, in any state. Mother, let's speak the fact here. There are people who have used a passport to come to South Africa, mm -hmm. and there are people that are in South Africa. They do not have a passport. Mm -hmm. They do not have. Those are the people that we're talking about here today. Mm -hmm. yes. So how can they get such documents, ID copy or anything that will allow them or assist them in having some kind of a document okay. in South Africa? We know that maybe other people came from South Africa because of persecution. All right. They left to go through home affairs and apply mm -hmm. for uh, Islam seeker status. Okay. And then they'll have to wait for the process to be finalized. Mm. And then the ones who came with... While you are still waiting, what are you supposed to do? Can you get a job while you're still waiting? Can you go to school while you're still waiting? You have to wait until it's finalized. Mm -hmm. Then you know your status mm -hmm. that... Am I, am I a refugee mm. or am I a, a stateless or mm. this is my nationality okay. or do I need to have um, mm. the, what, what do you call that, um, that again? the permit All right. yeah it's either working permit or studying permit okay. yes. alright tell us more you are an advisor what type of people walk into your office on a, on a daily basis let's say on a nice day because we're going to touch on the worst day also okay um we are in Houghton province remember Houghton province it's many it's a mini world mm. so any nationality or any person from any country can be a victim of violence crime so we help the, the victims of violence crime let's take somebody comes in they need help mm -hmm. they are stateless number one we check with them when we do our intake screening, mm -hmm. your name, your biographical information, the origin of your country. Yeah. Those are the first basic things mm -hmm. that we want to hear from our victim when we do the intake. Mm -hmm. Then the violation comes in, the violent crime that occurred to them, whether it's GBV, whether it's your domestic violence. That process should have a name. What is the name of that process that you do? Then we're doing the screening. Okay. We're screening our client. All right. We're assessing. Uh, what is happening with, with, with the clients, the registration and everything. Right. Then we take it from there. Then we come in now with the cases of the GPV. And then we talk to them and make them away. If it's a rape case, the case will be opened. Mm. It will be taken through the whole process. But the challenge would be, come time, you need a place of safety. The criteria going to the place of safety, you need to produce mm. any document that you have. Whether it's Aslam Sika, whether it's your passport, whether it's your ID document, any permit that you have, we need that to be produced so that you can get access to the place of safety. We are living, it's a fact, we are living on the shakes. One shakes get it, they'll catch a fire, and the next, and the next. I don't have documents. I don't have anything. I come to your office. What would you advise me to do? Okay, at first you need to tell me Yes, my document have been through yeah. the, the, the fire and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then a second question would be, which country are you coming from? Right. Where you registered, mm -hmm. then we refer uh, the case to the lawyers okay. for human rights. Right. The lawyers for human rights will help us to dig more and do more research. Oh, okay. Yeah, and check if you are registered with the state that you claim that mm -hmm. you are coming from. Okay. Then if you are registered, We'll take it from there. So your issue is now sorted. The, your issue is now okay. sorted, and that also help you to go through back to your embassy mm. to to accompany those documents that are are missing. All right. Yeah. Same person. Mm -hmm. Documents, but mm. I do not. I did not come in South Africa the right way. In mm -hmm. the country that I was born in, I was stateless. Okay. What do you do, or how do you advise such a client? 
okay, the lawyers for human rights again. Mm. We write the report in everything that we acquired from you yeah. and then refer for, for the human rights law to further investigation. Okay, tell us about the worst day ever that you have encountered. Uh, the worst day ever. <laughs> The victim that would come being mm. violated sexually, being violated mm. even yeah. physically, yeah. yeah, they come to you, they're stateless. Okay. And then you'll help with the process of, of, of the, the, the police, mm. the health services and everything. Mm. There comes, you need a place of safety for them. It's difficult to look at the person who is crying and you can see that mm. going back yeah. to the situation, yes. they can either die as a result mm. of feminism or, or feminist or something mm. else so it's difficult to like look at the person and say you are stateless I don't know where to mm. take you and take it mm. Mm -hmm. so those are the challenges those that are the challenges that we face mm. hence we're saying to the communities please 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 make sure you register whatever mm. last document that you have make sure you put it safe whether it's a passport that has expired or whatever have something that tells that this is where you come from. Mm. Have something that tells, even though you don't, like for an example, mm. you would have a child who came with the parents in South Africa. Yes. At that time, they were eight or nine years old. Mm. Then along the way, the parents passed on. Mm. So those kids, they would learn the language in South Africa. Yeah. They are not sure where they're coming from. Mm. Those are the worst cases that we meet. You talk to the child, they fluently speak a South African language. Yeah. But when you track the original, original where they're coming from. They're coming from one of the African countries. Yeah. And it's difficult to say, uh, we can deport the child back there. Who do they know? Because they came with the parents, and at the, at the end of the day, the parent passed on here in South Africa. Those are the cases that the lawyers for human rights help us with. Right. So is that how important it is to have a document? To have a document. It does not matter how old it is. How old it is. Right. As long as we can be able to trace uh, the family members maybe the late parent who brought you in South Africa. So your office only um, assists or advise people who are stateless or is there any other thing that your offices are doing? No, as a community advice office we do yeah. social justice issues right. where we help with uh, anything related to social issues. Okay. Uh, your statelessness, oh, yes. your human rights violation, the victims rights chapter the last yeah. time I, I, I touched on when you, you when you are a victim, what are your rights specifically? Yes. Mm. When you come to the services mm. uh, that you need to have, like opening your case, going to the social services uh, issues, going to the criminal justice system, mm. going to the Department of Justice with your case. Those are the cases that we deal with. Not only those, we only do the civil cases. All right. The statelessness issues also covers the let's take you have a parent and your parent passed away mm -hmm. they have a house right. and then they've never applied for a birth certificate for you mm -hmm. there comes a late estate automatically you must um you must get the asset of your parent yes. but without any birth certificate or id document it's going to be difficult for you to get those assets that belongs to your parents mm -hmm. at the end of the day the next person who's a family member yeah. will come and take those assets mm -hmm. on your behalf mm -hmm. and not sure are they going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is another challenge that we face mm -hmm. when it comes to stateless kids, when, when it comes to the late estate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you are a community up there and you know you do not have any documents mm -hmm. and you know you need to make sure that you find an area that can assist you. One thing are still you know fresh do not wait for them until it's too late mother tell us more the listeners are listening and they want to hear exactly what is it that this office is helping them and is offering them because it's called the advisor what are you advising okay. we are still talking statelessness okay um dobson Human rights advice center it's a community advice office we are not only based in dobson Bob. all right we have the organization called um, Kaosa, mm. Community Advice Office Association. We have uh, community advice offices around Kauten. We have eight offices. Okay. We have yes. the one in West Rand, we have the one in Val, two in Val Rand, mm. uh, two in West Rand, mm -hmm. um, two Samurwalo, West Rand Advice Office, 
We have the one in Val Orange Farm Advice Office. We have the other one at East Rand Yote Lisa. We have other one in Zola Advice Office, Yosubonda Advice Office in Zomoto. We have the Nutsu Advice Office in Pretoria. We have the other one at Mabubane and Hamas Club. So all of us as community advice office, we do social justice issues where we help communities based on the violation of their human rights. So the statelessness is part of, of the program of the violation of, of human rights because as human beings, we have a right to belong to a state. We have a right to be named and, 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 and sene. We have a right to nationality. So if we don't, that's violation of our human rights. Therefore, we need the state to help us to record and register us in those system. So it takes two to tango. It must be the state and us as communities oh, yeah. to take a stand and register for ourselves to, to, to be recognized by the state. So those who are sitting at home, I don't have a document, I don't have anything. I'm just sitting there hoping things will get well. Will they without you standing up and registering? Um, they can stand up themselves. I would advise mm -hmm. them to stand up. Go straight to home affairs. Okay. First step, so that's the first step. First step, you yeah. go to Home Affairs, and then if Home Affairs... What uh, are you doing at Home Affairs? Because home you affairs, know, when you get to Home Affairs, they yeah. accuse and they are lying, they, they say, what are you doing here? He said, I want an ID. Yes. At Home Affairs, you have um, the assistant. Okay. Those who are helping on the queue. All right. They'll ask you a question, how can mm -hmm. we help you, so that we can put you in the, the right, right queue. Yeah, and course. then you will tell them, I'm here for a new application of an ID. Okay. If you are over the age of 15, the late registration of birth, they'll give you those application form and tell you the requirements. You must make sure you mm. put your biological parents' okay. uh, information. If you don't, then as we spoke that Gogo will have to assist you via a social worker okay. for you to have those documentation to apply first for a birth certificate before you can even apply. Okay, so you're saying we should be less than 15 or less than 16? Uh, you should be less than 16 years. Okay. Yes, to right. go with Ukogo if okay. by both biological parents mm. are not there. Alright, so a child still stand a chance to, for a late registration of a birth certificate. certificate. Mm. Right. And then after acquiring the birth certificate, then you can apply. Yeah, for then an it ID makes it because you've got the yes. number already. Yes. And so I, somebody who's in South Africa and do not have any documents. Now we're talking about the child. Yes. What about an adult? Uh, an adult, again, they can apply. Mm -hmm. Not for an ID document. The process is start with the birth certificate. The birth certificate. First, mm -hmm. again, they go to home affairs. Explain their status of the case. Mm -hmm. The home affairs would be the one who instruct them these are the required documents to okay. comply right. first. Okay. At some point, as, as community mm -hmm. advice officers, you come to us and mm -hmm. present your case. Then we tell you, go look for this document first before mm -hmm. you go to Home Affairs. Go look for those affidavits accompanying your application. Okay. Go look for your family members if your biological parents are not there yes. to help you to, to do your application. Mm -hmm. So right. those are the part of, of, of the requirement that first home affairs you exhaust all those that's okay. when we can take your case are there any costs associated with that yes they are especially if uh, you're applying for the birth certificate all right you are over the age of 18 oh. and then remember your first application maybe you have a biological father or a biological mother you need to go for maternity and dna test it costs uh, uh, seven hundred to, to, to prove that biologically you belong to their parent for you to for them to help you to apply for a birth certificate to be approved yeah yes okay is there I, i'm not even sure whether you will have an answer for this one but is our government doing enough to to try and cover because we all claim we are africans mm -hmm. and africa has got many countries in there so if i am an african if i'm in south africa that means i belong to you do I belong without any documents? Um, the constitution says straight away, mm. South Africa belongs to the people who are staying in it. Okay. Yes, yes I'm here, but yes. I don't have documents. You don't have documents. The no. procedure is, uh, you come to us, mm. we screen you, okay. and check which country are you coming from. Okay. It will be 
you came as per persecution, oh, yes. that will be the Aslam seeker. Yeah. Your passport has expired, then we'll help with the process. Mm. And then at the end of the day, it will reach home affairs or it will reach our referral to the lawyers for human rights and pro bono dot org Johannesburg so they can screen you. Can you please say that again? Pro bono yes. dot org in Johannesburg. All right. Yeah, they also help with the statelessness, right. the refugee application, mm -hmm. yeah, the refugee status application. Mm -hmm. Then both of them, those lawyers can help with the process of the application. Okay, so yeah. everybody can belong. Everybody can belong. Statelessness doesn't only affect the children. Mm -hmm doesn't only affect the elders, mm -hmm. but it affects the whole community. The whole community. Would you touch on, on the children that are at school and they do not have documents? Yes. Do you have a child working into your offices? We have a lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. uh, especially the kids who are in metric. Yes. They would say, I'm in grade 11, grade 12. I have to register for my yeah. exams. So I can't because I don't have an ID document. Mm -hmm. Then I think the, the, the rule in 2019, December, the judgment came yes. that we can register those kids. Okay. Yeah. How and do you register a child uh, without any document? We, we can register them. Yeah. The, Department of, uh, the Department of Education was taken to court that especially the metric and the grade uh, R or grade 1 kids mm. can be registered uh, without an ID document until a certain period of time. of an application okay yes oh so you're talking about registration of the child at school yes. so leave the child to learn mm -hmm. while you are busy with the, with process. the process of the application but now you start the child at grade out yes. by the time the child gets to grade 12 the document is still not ready how do you sort out that problem because i want to sort it out for the children and yeah. the parents that are at home yes. to say now i'm sitting with this child who do not have the documents he's been at school challenge that we encountered a lot are the grandmothers would go and register the kids as their biological kids. Come 18 years old, the child must apply for an ID. The child is blocked in the system because the grandmother is not the biological mother. So we advise the grandmothers, when you go and apply for birth certificate, yeah. make sure you get a go to children's court, you tell the court that I'm the biological grandmother, mother. not the mother because come 18 years old, it will be difficult for them to obtain. Is there an another ID word that the, the, the grandmother can use when they go to court? Because according to our culture, if the child is with you, you have become a mother automatically. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say for argument's sake, I take my children and leave them with my mother. Yeah. My mother now is responsible for my children. Mm -hmm. They say it's mother, you know? Yes. So now how do or what must they do in order for them to know that no, this is not my biological child. Okay. This is my grandchild. Okay. What is it that they need to do? They go to children's court. Yeah. They re register those kids as a, they register the kids under them as the guardian. Oh, as a guardian. They are not right. the biological uh, yes, mothers, yes. but they are guardians. The kids are under their guidance. Yeah, okay, of their, course. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So, viewers at home, if you are sitting there and you have children that are not biologically yours, please. Do not say they are biologically yours. It will catch up with them when they need their own documents. You need to use the word guardian in order for them. Mata, we still have time. Two, three yes. minutes we mm -hmm. still have. Mm -hmm. I want you to give us more information. What else can your department or your offices help us um, as the community? All right. When we come in and make awareness about the ID documents and, mm. and, and Where the do you make those awareness? In our community in Dobsonville, okay. in Brantfisher, in right. Sloverville. So meaning all your officers have the responsibility yes. to make awareness in their own community. Yes, remember I talked about LA, more than 10 yes, advice yes, officers. Of yeah. We do the same oh, workshops. Okay. We okay. do the same awareness campaign based on yes. the statelessness. Okay. So you go to any other community advice mm -hmm. office, then they'll help you with the information that is related to the okay. statelessness. So truly, truly, there's no reason for everybody not to belong. Yes, that we is all true. had to belong somewhere. We all had to belong somewhere. Okay. If there are two things that you would want 
the community to know or the community to stop doing and start doing? What are those two important? Let's start about stop doing. All right. Don't be ignorant. Please, Please make sure when you go out of the antenatal clinic, mm. you register. So now you're talking about the new mothers. Mm. Yes, the new right. mothers. You register your child. Okay. If you are coming out of South Africa, mm. you came with a passport and you took your child to school. Mm. Please make sure you update your passport so that it will help the child mm. to have the documentation that are proper for them to attend school. So that when they have the trick, they can be able to get their ID documents. Okay, so now we're talking to the parents. Parents, make sure we take responsibility upon your shoulders and make sure that the these kids have documents. Yes. Right. And another thing, if you have applied to home affairs, whether it's ID document, or it's birth certificate, or it's passport, or the future status. Please make sure you make follow-ups so that you know the updates and everything. Then when you come to us, you come to us giving feedback that I've made follow-up. This is the stage that I'm yeah. in. So that it's easy for us to help a lot of community members with their business. Yeah, one thing that I always hear, people will say, I went to home affairs, but they said I must go back. Go back where? with the case yeah. there are those cases whereby the home office would say go back home we will call you all right for a panel interview mm -hmm. that's the process of home okay. affairs yeah. we can't override that mm -hmm. they have a list a long list of, of a waiting list okay. of the interviews so it does take years or yes. months or days it does okay it does right. the only thing you have to do you have to make follow-ups okay so make that means people need to be yeah. patient need to be process. patient they need to follow up and hear what am i how far in the queue? Yeah. What number? So which month do you think I can be able to come and and, okay. and do those interviews? Viewers, if are the you listening? Document. You need to make the follow ups. It's your responsibility to make the follow up. Always follow up and ask how far am I? How far is the process? And what is it that you need to do from your side? All right, mother. Okay. Continue the. So after making the follow-ups, then you yeah. come to our office. Okay. You say, I'm having a problem, home affairs, this and this and that. Okay. With the last follow-up feedback, mm. it's easy for us to make more follow-up mm. or refer the case to the lawyers for human rights and say, our client is currently mm. having the status from the home affairs. So it's yeah. easy for them to make further follow-up with a court order or anything that okay. is it's So help is out there. Yes, help is out there. So what makes it so hard for us not to follow, not to follow through so that we all have documents? What is it? The challenge would be yeah. the mother would come having a complaint with the first child. All right. We open a file and we file it there. They don't come back. After two, three years down the line, they come back with the second child. Oh. That's when they need help. Okay. And say, please help me with the second one. And the first case. Oh, I came here seven it, years ago. It's filed there. Yeah. Yes. So that is the challenge. With the first file, make a follow-up and get help. Yes. Second, same. All right. Don't leave the file because we ended up having a pile of files in our offices. The mother came once or twice and they don't come back for the follow-up. Others, they would never come would, back others again. Others will never come back again. They only come back when they have a newborn baby again and say, I used to come to this office, then that's it. Mm. Yeah. So this is a continuous thing. Yeah mother has got challenges, you have a challenge as a child and you grow up, you still don't have documents. Yes. So let's stop and avoid statelessness, yes. let's register, mm. let's produce all the documentations as a right and yeah, let's yeah. Have Community we have heard from the office itself, please make sure that you register with children, please make sure that you do have a document, we all belong somewhere and hashtag I too belong, this is Dr.